welcome to uh, today session class in today uh, session we are going to see about the uh, what is uh, how we can select or uh, we can choose a motor uh, and uh, next uh, uh, topic uh, what are the factors which are uh, going to affect the performance of the motor uh, first regarding the first topic the motor selection uh, while choosing a uh, motor some factors should be considered uh, for the choice of selection of motor so uh, regarding the uh, motor uh, selection the first point is the primary technical consideration defining the motor choice is the torque required by the uh, door while uh, choosing the motor choice uh, the major thing is the technical consideration technical consideration means is the how much of torque required the maximum torque required by the door especially uh, the relationship between the maximum torque generated by the motor and the torque requirement for uh, the startup uh, of that particular uh, motor and uh, during the acceleration period so both uh, during the uh, during the startup and both acceleration uh, torque should be calculated and the relationship between the startup torque and the acceleration torque should be um, calculated uh, and it will be uh, useful for the selection uh, and uh, choice of the motor. So, uh, this should be, uh, care should be taken uh, for the maximum torque requirement for the uh, startup of the motor and, uh, and uh, motor and, and during the uh, acceleration period of the motor running period. And uh, next major point is the uh, duty cycle and the load cycle is also should be considered for the selection of motor because this duty cycle whether the load uh, is going to run as a uh, continuous load mode or inter uh, intermediate uh, uh, load mode. so regarding uh, by considering these uh, factors of the load um, we can choose the uh, motor rating why uh, we have to consider this uh, duty cycle and uh, load cycle means the thermal loading uh, that is the temperature rise rises in the mode according to the load connected to the motor. Uh, so, uh, the load calculations should be um, determined uh, exactly calculated so that the motor choice can be chosen. And third point uh, keep in mind is the complete operating condition. The operating condition, surely the operating condition is going to affect the uh, choosing the motor choice. So, according to the load condition a special motor design are available uh, whether the motor is going to uh, present in a dusty atmosphere uh, location and some restricted physical space so that should be considered and special uh, some special uh, design uh, should be carried out in that motor in that motor according to their operating condition operating condition so surely the operating condition where it is going to the motor is where going to operate uh, sh should uh, know uh, because this may affect the motor choice surely and uh, next fourth uh, important thing is that uh, whether the motor is going to operate as a automatic or uh, manual control automatic control or manual control so this may help uh, uh, the, by choosing the choice of the motor uh, it should be considered and uh, the fifth major point is the reliability of the motor reliability reliability so reliability means the motor reliability is considered by the designer and uh, the process engineer who is, go, who is going to decide the motor for which size of motor uh, we have chosen uh, uh, is going to be the reliability of the motor so uh, the designer and the manufacturer and the um, process engineer uh, should care about the uh, reliability of the motor so uh, while ch choosing the motor choice the re reliability of the motor should be uh, considered and um, the um, uh, designer and the process engineer should have good knowledge of uh, process parameters uh, which can aid to reduce the oversizing oversizing where no loss of reliability occurs. No, by uh, by choosing, they, they, they should have good knowledge of process parameters. 
and uh, the fifth one is the inventory inventory is also a very important consideration for the motor selection of choice uh, because in large industries if we choose a uh, standard equipment which can be easily replaced or uh, service oriented while choosing the motor it should be uh, purchased from a uh, so while uh, considering the um, manufacturing uh, uh, aspects uh, the large industries should, uh, while purchasing a bulk or large industries should, uh, should purchase a uh, um, motor uh, in a standard equipment uh, what should be considered is the whether uh, the motor purchased is having a proper uh, service center proper uh, uh, service center so that uh, it can be the spare parts available in the market means so that uh, the motor can be uh, easily replaced easily replaced mm -hmm. and uh, thereby reducing the uh, stock of uh, uh, reducing the stock of spare parts that must be maintained and minimizing the uh, minimizing the shutdown uh, times so uh, during the preventive maintenance or or uh, the uh, breakdown maintenance uh, care should be taken whereas the standard motors are uh, purchased standard motors are purchased uh, during the um, uh, uh, purchase period so and uh, the sixth one is the price of the motor is also uh, another issue for the uh, selection of the motors so major user major users are first cost sensitive major users are cost sensitive leading to the purchase of the less expensive motors less expensive motors and the less expensive motors may be more costly more costly as a life cycle basis because of their uh, lower efficiency life cycle basis uh, because of that so care should be taken for the um, uh, price of the motor should be also considered for the selection of motors and the last point is some other some salient uh, selection uh, issues are uh, given below issues uh, are uh, given below I, uh, are the, the motor uh, are uh, consuming the, the standard uh, motors are consuming the reactive power drawn by the motors so should be considered these salient features also considered uh, for this a special uh, Indian standard BIS standards have been uh, created for the standard motors which uh, allows the 15 percentage tolerance and the efficiency uh, of uh, the motor rating up to 50 kilowatts and 10 percentage of the motors over uh, 50 kilowatt uh, ratings so uh, it is the next topic uh, we are going to cover the factors affecting the motor performance factors affecting the motor performance in factors what are all the factors affecting the motor performance is that uh, there are seven categories of uh, uh, factors that are going to affect the motor performance that is the uh, first one is the power supply quality uh, and uh, second one is the motor loading that is the under loading and third one is the sizing to variable load so in uh, today's uh, class we are going to see the first three topic that is the how the power supply quality uh, is going to affect the motor performance and uh, second one is the motor loading that is the by under loading and third one is the sizing of uh, variable uh, loads so the first uh, factor the first factor that is the power supply quality so power uh, supply uh, quality means uh, how it is going to affect the motor performance power supply means what the quality of input power input power means uh, it is nothing but uh, the actual voltage and uh, frequency available at the motor terminals and second one is the voltage unbalancing voltage unbalancing across the three phase suppose if we connect a three phase r y b some uh, the R uh, phase is having some 230 volt and uh, Y phase is having 180 volt and the uh, Z phase is having some uh, 200 volt means the three phases are unbalanced. So if the voltage of the three phases are uh, unbalanced then the motor performance is surely going to affect and the actual voltage which is uh, obtained in the incoming uh, is not in a proper way if the voltage reduces in the incoming terminal of the motor terminal then the motor performance also going to reduces uh, similarly the frequency available in the motor terminal uh, should be maintained as a 50 hertz if the frequency reduces then the uh, motor performance is also surely going to 
affect. So, uh, most of the motors which are available in India must come under the standard set of BAS, that is the Bureau of Indian Standards. Uh, they have uh, set some uh, tolerance norms to variation in the input power quality. Mm, that is the BAS standards specifies that the voltage variation may have plus or minus uh, 6 percentage variation and the frequency have, may have plus or minus 3 percentage variations. And as we said before, the next is the fluctuation in the voltage as well as the frequency are much larger and uh, quite common in uh, utilizing the um, supplied electricity in India. So, the voltage fluctuation uh, should be maintained. Voltage, there is no uh, care should be taken. There is no voltage fluctuation because the voltage fluctuation in the uh, motor terminals is going to impact on the motor performance. And uh, the voltage unbalancing condition also uh, in the three phase are not equal. Means surely it is go also going to affect the uh, individual motor performance and as well as the motor life as well as the motor. And uh, next one is the motor loading. And what is motor loading means? The percentage of motor loading is calculated by the input power drawn by the motor kilowatts uh, to the full load nameplate, full load nameplate kilowatt rating, or uh, otherwise uh, called as the nameplate full load motor efficiency into 100. Uh, so, the, this what uh, we can calculate the percentage of uh, motor loading. And how the reducing under loading means the motor performance reducing under under loading under loading means uh, common practice is contributing to some optimal motor efficiency uh, under loading. So under loading if uh, under loading uh, happens uh, most of the most of the time if the motor runs below 40 percentage of the loads it is called as uh, under loading. So uh, with that continuous running of the under loading the motor performance. Uh, the motor efficiency is going to affect surely it is going to affect so higher than the necessary first as of the motor and the related control equipment should be uh, followed uh, in underloading so underloading uh, in common uh, the in underloading there are some uh, several uh, problems problems what are the problems uh, in underloading means the original equipment manufacturers should uh, use a larger safety factors in the motors while selecting. While selecting itself, so they have to uh, fix a safety factors in the motors. And underloading of the motor may also occur uh, from under utilization of the equipment. While selecting the large motor uh, and uh, to maintain the output at the desired level even when the input voltage are abnormally low. So, uh, and the next thing in underloading result, uh, also result, also result while selecting a large motor uh, for an application uh, according to the requirement of uh, high starting torque. So, a special motor should be designed for the high uh, starting star uh, would, would have been uh, choose properly for uh, the underloading uh, purpose. So, these are all the some common uh, several reasons uh, for uh, underloading. And uh, next uh, the topic is the sizing to variable loads. We have to uh, choose the special uh, size to variable loads. So, most of the industrial motors are frequently operating under variable loads. Not, not it is a continue, continuous load but not a constant load. So, it is having a variable load only. So, in this uh, requirement, due to this process requirement, a common practice is followed uh, where such variable loads are found. So, according to that variable load, a proper selection of motor based upon the highest anticipation load, highest maximum duration uh, maximum duration load can should be calculated and the highest anticipation load should be calculated. With that, uh, we can choose a uh, proper uh, motor ch choice according to that. So, this is a common practice. So, before choosing uh, the motor ch uh, selection ch choice, uh, you have to um, find out the uh, highest duration that is the maximum torque or maximum load calculation. So, alternating to approach, alternating to this approach is also the less costly while choosing the motor, less costly uh, the motor price should be low but it should have more efficient, 
more efficient and uh, it should have higher efficiency uh, and provides the equally satisfaction operation and next uh, thing uh, to in uh, today class uh, the last uh, session we are going to see is that uh, the optimum rating of the motor rating of the motor is selected only on the basis of the load duration curve for the particular uh, the motor choice so uh, the uh, while choosing the motor um, uh, we are uh, the load duration curve should be calculated for the particular load and uh, from that a curve has been uh, drawn and uh, where the maximum load occurs and where the minimum load occurs in a 24 into bars, uh, 7 hours that should be calculated uh, so it, it will be very helpful, helpful in the choosing of the ratings of the motor and thus rather than selecting a motor of higher rating higher rating that would operate at uh, full capacity if uh, if it runs for a only for a short duration maximum uh, maximum uh, torque or maximum load uh, is run only for a short periods then the selection of uh, high uh, instead of choosing the selection of high rating uh, next level of low level of rating motors can be chosen mm, and uh, the motor rating would be selected slightly lower than that of the uh, peak anticipation load and would operate at a uh, overload for a short period of time and the next thing is the thermal thermal withstand capacity of the motor is also taken into consideration because it is also going to uh, important factor which is also going to affect the motor performance while operating in a higher load uh, than its rated load than its higher load than its rated load so with this uh, we conclude our um, today session thank you